Hey guys, what is going on? In this video, I'm going to teach you how to spawn display entities and it's going to be looking like that. Oh, really sorry about the text. I wasn't creative enough. Well, that's what you get for watching a YouTube, <laughs> YouTube tutorials. Excuse me. So actually, I'm going to teach you how to spawn and there's more how to spawn these things. We're going to be starting very, very, very basic with spawning uh, diamonds. And then I'm going to show you how to spawn a gigantic diamond, which this shader pack can't even render. Jesus Christ. So there's a lot of cool stuff. And sorry to break it down for you, but sorry to break it off to you. But IntelliJ, not good. We're going to be using Eclipse. Whoa. Because simple reason, Eclipse let us run the entire server directly from within. And it happens to work faster when I'm recording. IntelliJ would be very slow. And if I change one thing right here, or if I change the diamond to, say, grass, right? I want to show this to you instantly in the code right in the game. So we're going to be using Eclipse for that. Excuse me. But anyways, the other parts should be good. So basically display entities, these are transparent, right? As you can see, transparent, not transparent, but you can walk through them like that. They have no, they're not blocking. There is just a display. It's a fake entity. It's a fake entity. And you can position it, you can rotate it, you can scale it in, in, in size. And this can be either a block, either an item, or as you've seen, as you've seen in the, in the intro, this can also be a text, a warning. Okay, so how do you actually spawn them? First of all, you need Minecraft 1.19.4 and higher to spawn them. And then you need to be really good at Java because coding Minecraft plugins requires Java. And if you need more understanding in Java and you want to make amazing Minecraft plugins, check the link for Project Orient training in the description. It is the best course on this exact thing times 200 more. It is seven weeks of pure content, how to build mini games, anti cheats, GUIs, custom monsters, all that good stuff. And in this video, we're just going to be zoning in on this one concept. But again, if you want to learn more about Minecraft plugins, check that link. And it also includes full Java course. So if you know how to how to code in Java and you have watched my first and my second episode in this tutorial, so you have that plugin, you have the setup uh done and you also watched the video about commands so you know how we added this command i'm not going to cover what a command is in minecraft plugins because there is already a video that i made earlier so make sure to watch that if you need to uh this is a very simple command make sure to register it in your plugin uh, plugin file like this one just like we did for the other commands again i'm not going to spend too much time on it and then also make sure to go to the main class uh, just as we did in the previous videos and simply duplicate the other line and change it to the display entity command that's it and then also i revoke access to consoles very very basic so considering we are a player we can open up our world and then we can call the spawn function and then we can simply spawn the entity at our i think it's at our feet location and then inside the other par parameter we're simply going to put a display right because as you can see here it requires a class that is a spawnable entity now the problem with this display is that we can't we can't spawn a display directly because this is an app too abstract even for bucket and so if i look at the implementation of display Eclipse does it really well because it shows it directly right here. So there's three classes which we can use to spawn these display entities. The first one being block, then being an item, and then being a text. So I think I'm, I, I just started with a with an item display. Whoops, item display right here, and that's how you basically spawn it. Now, if you don't, if you don't have any other code. I don't think it, it's going to be visible because what you need, you need to call item dot set item stack and then create a new item stack within which you will put a material for the actual texture of the item. And this, this is a bit tricky because some of these are blocks inside the material and some of these are enums. I do think you are going to get an error if I attempt to spawn a, say, diamond block like this one. And I go into the game and also, yeah, I have to disable the transformation because otherwise we're just going to end up with a gigantus, gigantus like, like like this one, diamond. If I type in display entity, 
I should have now actually, okay, so I'm actually seeing a black. So, okay, so that, that happens to work. I know for some other blacks it didn't, so make sure to be careful, but you're just going to get an error. There isn't any problem. And if that doesn't work, then just change the item display to block display, as I'm going to teach you, as I'm going to teach you uh, in the second part of it. So this is the first thing, okay, set the item stack and you're done. Now, optionally, you can also add the transformation right here. I'm just gonna change. Uh, I'm just gonna change the code a little bit so it makes more sense. All right, so we've we've been here. Then we've set the item stack, and now you can get the item's transformation, which basically rotates uh, the item. Also, it can scale it, and then we need to set the custom transformation back again. That's just how it works, unfortunately. Uh, and then here, you can call transformation.getScale set. And this is basically a double, so this requires you to put in one for the original size, or if you want to make it smaller, you can do 0.5, right? This is going to print a diamond, which is half in size. If I do one, this should put a diamond that is twice as big as 0.5. Hopefully that makes sense. You can go up to, I don't know, a million, right? This is going to spawn a relatively big diamond. Now, the problem with the bigger bigger sizes is that Minecraft client is not going to render them properly. As you can see, it is flickering. So I would recommend you stick with maximum 20 or maybe even 15. I'm just going to go with uh, two. And then you can also rotate it. So there is a left rotation X, Y, and Z axis. And this goes from minus one to one. This can also be a zero point something value. Now, careful with this one. This one takes a float, so here you have to put in an F. If you attempt to put a decimal, it's not going to work, so you have to add an F to the end uh, for Java to convert it into a float decimal number. Again, make sure to know Java basics first, otherwise you might get confused. And the X basically means the forward and back backward lay of the diamond. So let me just show this to you. This is the X right here, the X1 and the X minus 1. And then the Y means horizontal rotation, right? So that means, um, yeah, I think that one, that one is a 0 0.5. As you can see, it is diagonally skewed. And then the Z uh, actually does, I, I don't think it can go to minus one, over minus one, because it's just going to start from, from zero. And this is the right and left uh, tilt. So that one basically means this one, okay? This is the, I think this is minus one. And then this is plus one. So it the diamond is like this, and then it tilts to the sides, right? So I just I'm just gonna leave these comments right here so that you can see the source code below this video in the blog post and you can just use it very quickly. There's also something called a view range, which I found that 0.1 float equals to 16 blocks. This means how far you want to go if you want to see the block. So if I stand right here and I type display entity, the diamond should disappear once I reach 16 blocks like this and if i go away yeah it now disappears okay and i think if we remove it it's just gonna set it to the default value which i think i don't know what that default value really is but i think it has to do something with the server display uh value so this is handy if you want to hide these blocks further away from the player i would not recommend sending it to a gigantically big value because there is no point besides if you go too far uh from the chunk it is going to be, chunk is going to be hidden and the entity will be unloaded, uh, unloaded as well. Okay, so that's the first option. There's also a shadow radius, which simply means ah, the shadow, let me actually teach you this, let me actually show this to you. So the shadow right here, no, this is not the shadow. Okay, I have shaders enabled, but basically the shadow is a circle. Let me disable sh sh these shaders real quick. So the sh shadow in Minecraft without shaders, okay? This is a circle like this one, as you can see right here. And then this one happens to be 1.3 blocks. So the center of the block is right here. No, no, sorry guys. It actually is just one block. Um, yeah, it's, it's a little bit over one block, but mathematically from the block center to the end is about one block size. So this is the shadow radius. And then the shade of strength is how much th this shadow is going to be dark. And if I set it to five, it's actually going to just be a pitch black. So what a funny thing you can do, you can set a scale to zero and then you can spawn the entity just like that one, leaving the shadow radius to one and then the, the strength to five F. And it's literally going to be a pitch black hole. 
right? A dark hall. And then obviously you can make a plugin uh, using that as a feature. This is just, just something that I discovered and it looks pretty dope. So obviously I'm not going to do this in this video. That's it. There's also something called the display width and display height. I leave that up to you what that is because I was not able to figure that out. There's also something called billboard, which is auto rotation. So if I set it to center and I spawn a diamond like that, it'll actually rotate automatically. So I think if you use billboard, you won't be able to use the uh, transformation or maybe you will. Let me try. Oh, okay. Okay. So you are able to actually stack it and use the transformation and the billboard. The bill billboard can be both. It ro rotates like this. So both sides, it can be fixed, which is the default one, which means it doesn't rotate around your camera. It can be horizontal rotation or vertical rotation, right? So pretty basic here. And then the glow co color, I think that will only will show on the scoreboard, although I was not able to get this right. And then the, the brightness. So basically, if you don't set a bright brightness and I type in night, these will automatically be rendered according to the brightness of the server. However, if you set a brightness, this goes from it goes from zero to 15, as you can see here. Yeah. So if you set a brightness, you have to, to, do, to call new brightness, 1515, I think the first one is sunlight, black light. I don't really know the difference. I just set both to the same value. So zero means it is completely dark and 15 means it is completely uh, bright. And that one will stop, will overwrite the automatic brightness. So if I spawn it like this, uh, where is that? Let me just do it again display entity so if you if you spawn it like this it's going to stop aligning with the time of the day and if i set it to zero it's going to be dark even during the day just like that one okay so i do not really recommend setting the brightness because bucket if you don't set it it will take care of it automatically all right that's for display entities display items now display blocks let me actually turn the switch to false and let me enable this one. So block display, okay, the same as we did above. However, to make the block visible, you need to use the method called set block right here. And then you need to open a bucket and call create block data and then type in a material. That one is definitely not gonna work for items. If I try spawning it for items, it's gonna get us a print us an error cannot get data for not a block because that one is not a block but if i type in a diamond block now we're able to spawn a diamond block just like that one and then transformation and all these other uh properties will apply to it the same so i don't have to spend much time over it however the third one is something called the text display right here and that, that one is really nice because you can also set the text on multiple lines using the dash n the for the backward slash n so you can split this over multiple lines and you can also use the legacy color formatting or if you're using paper you can use the component formatting which i'm not going to cover i can make a separate video about it or you can simply use the chat color as i'm teaching in uh in my other videos typically we're just using I don't know what I'm going to use. I'm just going to go with green this time, right? And then let me just disable these other options so to, to, to show you what's going to happen. If we just leave it, maybe even without the transformation, display entity, come on. Okay. Oh, there we go. So as you can see, it only displays it from one direction unless you use the billboard. And I do recommend using the billboard for texts. Just like that. Okay, and now it auto rotates. So warning, you are an idiot. Awesome. So that's great. If you want to use transformation to make it bigger, of course you can to make sure that people are seeing that. Although, okay, so apparently that doesn't work. Sorry guys, that was a that was my my error in my testing. So you can't use a transformation. But what you can do use is something called the background color. And here you can go with bucket and you can either pick these colors that bucket already has, or you can even call from RGB. And you can place your own RGB colors here. And that one is something that you were able to see in uh, in the original video. So now the color is red in the background. Right? You can also use something called set line width. That means it is going to basically wrap after the given amount of, I guess, 
not not characters because that that one is not 50. I think something to do with Minecraft pixels. Yeah, because right now according to Minecraft rules, I don't know the exact measurement for that, but according to this one, this is over 50. You are an idiot is over 50, so now it wrapped on a new line, right? So this is useful if you, for example, if your plugin is reading from a file, these texts, and you want to make sure that the, that the text display is condensed. So that's how you can use it. So anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something new and hit the like, subscribe to this channel if you want to see more tutorial, tutorials like that. Check the link in the, in the video description for the full blog post, full source code, and the best of all, full training on how to code Minecraft plugins and learn Java. Thank you so much and take care.